Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Alice Springs. Indeed, welcome to an Alice Springs sunrise. I'd also like to welcome you to Vlog 47, how to get unstuck and reconnect with your thesis. So this is incredibly important, this vlog. This vlog could change your candidature and could change your life. And this vlog was suggested by the wonderful Bronwyn. Hello Bronwyn, live long and prosper. So let's start with a fact, if we can. The longer your candidature, the less likely you are to finish and that's why we as deans we as supervisors we as your colleagues try and move you along the candidature because we know the longer you are enrolled the less likely you are to finish and there's a really good reason for that you see in three years that's a long time three years is a long time and life happens during that time so if your candidature extends to four years or five years or six years then you know people die people get sick, jobs change, supervisors change, a lot can happen in four or five years. But also it's very easy during that time to turn away from the thesis for a week. You know like, oh look, I'm a bit busy next week, I'll just park the thesis. But the week becomes a month, becomes six months, and then becomes a year. So how do you get from this untenable difficult, stuck space into falling back in love with your PhD. Well, that's the task of this vlog today and we're going to move through five stages to move you from that really dark, difficult space to something much more positive. Now for those of you out there who are doing just fine with your doctorate or your research masters, that's terrific, brilliant, I'm so proud of you. But there may just be a technique or a tactic that we're going to talk about today that might help you during the difficult day or the difficult week or the difficult month. But for those of you right now, and I know a lot of you, for a lot of you out there right now who are deeply stuck in your thesis, so very bad things have happened and you just can't think your way out of it, ladies and gentlemen, this one is for you. So what I'd advise as we go through this vlog, this is one of those interactive ones, so as I go through each of the five stages, I'd ask that you might like to pause the video and enact the exercise that I'm going to give you to do. Don't worry, it's only a couple of minutes, I promise, but it's probably not a bad idea to hear what I have to say and then answer the question for yourself and your environment. So, you're stuck, let's get you out of it. And what a setting, eh? So stage one, what I want you to do is list your motivations. So as most of you know, when I decide to take on a PhD student, I'm not too interested in the publications they've done and all the rest of it, not hugely interested. What I am interested in is their motivation. So I get my students, before they're even my students, to list the 10 reasons why they're completing that PhD. And if they can't do that, I don't take them on. But the problem is, guys, when someone dies, when someone gets sick, when relationships break up, all your motivation sort of drops away because you've become a different person. So if you're stuck, what I want you to do is right now, right now, list down the motivations of why you are doing the PhD right now. And those reasons may be very different from the reasons that started you on that journey. And that's absolutely fine. Different motivations, good, but I need to see the motivations. Now motivation is everything in a PhD, everything. If you lose motivation, then you've lost the reason why you're doing it and really you shouldn't be doing a PhD anyway. PhDs are too hard. It's too tough anyway. And if you've lost your motivation, then you're not going to be able to do this. So what I'd ask is, if you've lost motivation, if you don't wanna do a PhD, then don't do a PhD make a decision to stop and that's absolutely fine. So what I'd also like you to do too is think through those motivations before you make the big decision about right I'm going to stop the PhD maybe go for a walk and just think through the one idea 
why exactly am I doing this PhD and find me some answers to that question. Write them down and then put those answers around your desk. What I want is people to have their motivations all around them in their working space. So when the negative thoughts come in, why the hell am I doing this? There's stuff all around your office that says, ah, oh, right, that's why I'm doing this. Okay, stage one, motivations, boom, we've done well. Stage two. I want you to take a stock take of your emotions. Now this second stage is probably the hardest one. Before we think through the scholarly state of your thesis, we need to do a stock take on your emotional state. So what I want you to do for me is write down what you are feeling right now. And you know, talk to me if you like, pretend you're talking to me, I say, how are you feeling? Write that down, explain it to me. Now I want you to be really honest with yourself. And this is the hard bit. Are you disappointed in yourself? Do you feel disgusted with yourself? Now that's, that's you know, they're terrible and negative and dreadful emotions, but I need you to sit in those emotions for a while. I need you to feel it, really feel it, and I need you to feel it so that you can move through that emotion. So I want you to name the emotion, I want you to claim the emotion, I want you to gain a consciousness of that emotion. So sit in it and start to understand it. Now that's great, you've done really well. The next stage is, I want you to answer for me a slightly different question. How did you get there? How did you get into that emotional state? Right, now this is important. We're gonna to return to the decision that you've just made there at the end of this vlog. But I just want you to remember, when I asked you, how did you get into this space? Did you look in the mirror and did you blame yourself? Yeah, I got myself here. Or did you blame a series of other people? We'll come back to what that decision means at the end of the vlog. So we've handled motivations, we've handled emotions, and yes, it is getting incredibly hot, but I'm going to persist because it's Alice Springs. We've handled emotions, we've handled your motivations. Now, we've done the blockages, so we've done the negative, quite upsetting stuff. What I want to do now is move to stage three. I want you to stock take your thesis right now. This is the good bit. Okay, let's get moving. So we've talked emotions. Now in this section, stage three, I want you to park those emotions for a while. I want you to write down the current state of your thesis. That means I want you to list the work that you've done. So what have you completed? Have you done ethics reviews? Have you done the iterative ethics clearances? That's great. Have you done the literature review? Have you done four parts of the literature review? Where are you on methods and methodologies? That's terrific, that's important. Where are you on data collection or engaging the archive or field work? What chapters have you started and finished? And give me a word count. How many words have you written? Now, no pressure, no emotion, and no judgment. So I just want an inventory. Brilliant, well done. Right, now the second task I want you to do in this stage is I want you to list the gaps for me. I want you to list the tasks or the ideas or the things that are yet to be completed. So what I want you to do is think about the work that is left to do. Now I want you to be really honest here, don't cheat yourself. No judgment, just list the work left to do, brilliant, proud of you, good. Now we're doing well, we're now moving to stage four. What I want you to do in stage four is attach a length of time to each of those tasks yet to complete. So you've got a list of all the tasks from the previous stage that you are yet to complete. Now that's great, that's really important. In this stage, what I want you to do is go down that list and attach a time, a time to complete that task next to the inventory. 
Now, some of those tasks might be really big. So when you've written, I need to do the literature review, what I need you to do is say, mm, the literature review probably has 16 different parts of the literature that I need to investigate that may boil down to eight sections of writing. So split everything down to that level and put a time next to it. Yes, you're predicting it, but try and predict it and you'll see why we're doing this in a second. So there's a task. There's a time to completion. Brilliant, winning. Let's move to stage five. What will you do tomorrow? What will you do tomorrow? Now that means what I want you to do right now is look at that inventory and the times next to it. And I want you to pick a task that you will complete tomorrow. Then I want you to wake up tomorrow and I want you to complete it. So start with the easy stuff, start with the simple stuff, the stuff that is the easy win, the low hanging fruit. Now some tasks on your list may take 10 hours, that's fine, don't do those at the moment. For the first few weeks, pick the tasks that take one hour, two hours or three hours. And what I want you to do is after you've done that task, I want you to celebrate every single achievement. I want you to speak the words out loud. That's really well done, Tara. We've done something today. That's brilliant. Don't judge yourself. Just create a culture where you have a task to complete and you complete it. Don't think about the submission. Don't think about the entire thesis. Just think about a task and complete it for me. And then after that task is done, select another one for the following day and yes, do it. So what I'm trying to do here is give you momentum, just simply get you back into the groove and create little wins in your thesis. So you complete a task and you gain some great sense of a vibe of, wow, I've done something, this is important, I'm moving forward. So they are the five stages to move you from disconnection and really hating your thesis, getting stuck in it, to actually loving it again, or at least respecting enough that you'll actually finish it. So remember, I was going to come back in this vlog to a final point. And that final point is about the importance of making choices, making decisions and claiming responsibility for your actions. So this is your PhD. You made a decision to enroll. You made a decision to be a PhD student. Now, I read a truly appalling book last week. I've been reading some really bad books lately, but I read a really dreadful book last week called Now or Never, Your Epic Life in Five Steps by a guy called Preston Smiles. You couldn't make this stuff up. Anyway, it's a dreadful book. But in this book, he used a very old and interesting phrase that I want to talk about today. And that phrase is radical responsibility. That phrase has a bit of heritage to it. It's quite interesting. Now, I actually know, team, if a PhD student is going to finish by the language choice that they use. So when they sit in my office or I'm talking to them via Skype or I read an email, the moment I hear a student blame supervisors, their parents, their kids, administrators, or the job, or many other things you can imagine, the moment I hear them displacing it and blaming other people, to be frank with you, I know that student is not going to finish. So a PhD is pretty well permanently bogged by excuses. So you have to make some decisions. You have some choices to make. And the question is, what are you choosing? Are you deciding to be an autonomous, thinking, thoughtful scholar? Are you deciding to manage your time? Are you deciding to manage your choices? Are you deciding to manage your decisions? Now, if you're doing that, you've just assumed radical responsibility for your life. It's really easy to blame other people because that lets you off the hook. It's harder, but also much more productive to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm responsible for my life. I'm responsible for my decisions. Now that's important to your professional life. You can't finish your PhD without radical responsibility. And it's also quite important for your personal life. Just to give an example, I had a really shocking, dreadful, you know, destructive, violent, fearful relationship in my early to mid twenties. Now, I didn't blame that guy at the time and I don't blame him now because it was my choice. It was my decision. 
I was stupid. I was ridiculous. I made a mistake. I made the mistake. I am no victim. I am the sum of my choices. I am no victim. I am the sum of my choices. So similarly, guys, give you one other example. Steve and I had relinquished tenured professorships. We'd sold our house in the United Kingdom, bundled up our entire life and put it on a ship to take up two new jobs in another country. Sold everything, had nothing left. Our life, entire life was moved. Within two days of arriving at this new job, the Dean was on a daily basis abusing us beyond belief. That was the job, by the way, where people were killing themselves because it was such an unpleasant environment. So within two days, Steve and I had a chat and we went, you know what? We've made a mistake here. We didn't have enough information and we've made a mistake. So we need to now leave this place. We need to apply for another job and leave quickly. So that's what we did. Drag control back into your life. Now, bad stuff happens to good people, but you will be judged. Yes, your character will be judged by how you handle the bad stuff. All of us make bad choices, but the skill in life comes from understanding when you've made that bad decision, calling it early, and then you know what? Making a better decision. So if you've made bad choices, no worries. Make better ones today. So if you keep going like you are now, blaming other people, living in an excuse culture, you will remain stalled. So what I'm asking you to do today in this beautiful environment is think differently. Show some courage. Claim some consciousness of your life and then you will create different outcomes. I wish you love, light and peace from the truly beautiful Alice Springs. Tea out.